Hi, Misha here, and recently Jerry was mentioning he was looking to get a new concealed carry CHL, whatever you'd like to call it, gun, defense gun, one that wouldn't print and one he could replace his current with. He's a 1911 guy, and he's been carrying one of the Wilson 9mm 1911s for several years, so yeah. Not a 1911 wouldn't be my carry choice, but others are. Of course, other people are revolver carry people. You can get Smith and Wesson J frames still with carry guns. I did have an air weight for a number of years, or an air light actually, I think it was. So you know, different strokes, and that's kind of what I said at the beginning: is carry guns are such a personal fit thing that one person loves, another person may hate. So you just have to kind of sample, and there's no way for anyone to really have all of them. However, we were going to go shooting, so I threw these two in the rig. If nothing else, I haven't shot them in a while, so it's a good time. As I joked with him, if I bring anything, you know it'll be Walther's. So here is the PPS M2. Here is the... PPQ, either it's called the MP, MPQ, the PPQ M2C, or the PPQ Subcompact. I've seen both names even on the Valter website. Both are in 9mm, both are considered compact carry type guns. I wasn't sure if he would love or hate them, but hey, why not run a few rounds through them, talk about a few things here. Haven't done many modern pistols in a while. And I guess I know that there are newer Walther designs like the PDP and others. This is just what I have. And what I enjoy and what I trust. So, actually, let's kick things off with the PPQ Compact here. I'll put a mag through it. Then we'll talk a bit about it and give it to Jero and see what he thinks. PPQ Compact. I got kind of a rain of brass there. I was directly the best kind in, of rain. Direct, <laughs> directly in the trajectory of the brass. Is that the first time? No, certainly not. <laughs> I really enjoyed the PPQ trigger, even all these years later. And this pistol has lineage dating back really to this one here. This is Walther's P88 Compact. This was the first double stack 14 round mag compact they had. Now it's not that small. We've done several videos on the P88s. This is kind of what it harkens to. A little bit smaller but still having a large enough capacity. Of course that would lead to the P99 compact. And for many years, they wanted them to give the PPQ treatment because the PPQ was really just a Generation 3 P99, truth be told. They wanted to essentially turn a P99 into a PPQ, and it was a long time before they did. But finally, some time ago, several years now, this came out. It has a 3.5 inch barrel. Weighs roughly 20 ounces. Takes the standard sights like other P99s, PPQs. Walther's pretty good about that. It is a pretty standard striker fired gun. We have ambidextrous control for slide release. And we have the quick defense trigger. Pretty nice pull, five and a half, six pounds. But what really helps, very short reset. No uh, loaded chamber indicator back here, and no, um, what am I trying to think of? Decocker is on the original. We do have a rail underneath with a couple of slots, squared off trigger. Of course, the original PPQ had the German style paddle release. The newer M2s of course have the button which can be 
positioned on either side. The PPQ does have removable back straps. It's a pretty standard gun. Pretty ergonomic grip. This is the 10 round mag. Giving it as small of a fit as possible. In fact, it's only about four and a half inches tall with it in. These also come with the same 10 round mag here, but with a finger rest. So it adds a little bit, but it gives your pinky a place to go. Some people don't like your pinky hanging out as such. So kind of solves it. The P99 came with the same type of mag. Of course, it adds a little bit of there. And Walter suggests those for carry duty, but for home defense or range practice, they suggest this, the 15 round mag. This gives it a full size grip, but you still have the shorter barrel. And this is simply a PPQ M2 mag with this uh, extension put on, grip extension. It's neat that they include it if nothing else. Also in the box, there is the mag loading tool and the other size of back strap. And then you have the other button if you want to put it on the left side for the mag couch. That's it, manual and thing. And again, this is chambered for nine by 19 Parabellum NATO, which is essentially the carry standard these days. It won the war with 40 Smith & Wesson. So with that said, let's give this to J-Ro uh, and let him load up a couple of mags and see what he thinks. J-Ro was wanting to try a carry gun, so we're going to go with the PCP compact. Yeah, that exactly, probably won't exactly fit so. Mag pouches. Yeah, handles like a compact. Yes, it does. So, what about the PPS? Well, this was first shown off in early to mid. 2007 and the very first ones hit American shores that Christmas. Known as the police pistol slim, it was really, according to Walther, a replacement for this gun, the PPK, or rather the PPKS in this instance. One of the most successful carry guns of all time, still in production today, but frankly, since these are chambered for either 32 or 380, even though they are a double single action and all that stuff, hopelessly obsolete by modern standards. But, really, back in 2006, Walther had nothing in their catalog quite like it. Now this is the M2 with several improvements, or at least changes. We've done full videos comparing the original to the M2. Here it is with its short mag six rounder it also comes with two other mags this is the seven shot and then finally we have eight shot so it's a very similar situation here where you can kind of size the gun depending on the mag you put in let's put the six back in the compact mag if I do it right yeah it won't go on the trigger so we're a little bit shorter on the barrel compared with the PPQ 
subcompact. This is, has about a three and a quarter inch barrel, which means the overall length, the other gun was about 6.3 inches long. This one's just over six inches long. Weighs a little less at about 18 ounces. With the six round mag in, it's under four and a half inches tall. If we put the eight rounder in, we're at about five and a quarter inches tall. And of course the seven is right in between. Unlike the PPS one, it does not have any rail slots. Instead they wanted when they went with the snag free approach, same with the more rounded trigger. Does have the slide release on the left, but not on the right. Has a nice trigger, but it's not a PPQ trigger. It's and it has a button style release here. Pretty standard striker fired gun based on really what was the first slim full power center fire pistol on the market, the PPS. Walther really pioneered that, although of course everyone makes something like this today. That's why I say it's more of a personal fit and comfort, what you know, like, and trust. So with that, again, let's let j -Row load up a couple of mags and try out the PPSM2. Now we're going to let j -Row try the PPSM2. And one of the things I always kind of like to get an idea for uh, with any new gun, especially like a deep carry gun, so many of the controls and prof it, it's so low profile. You don't want something that's so small that if you had to do a reload, you had to kind of fumble around for it. But this is at least a little pronounced. That was the short mag. It all right it's it's got a real thin profile to it so like for an appendix carry gun or something uh you know it'd be a little less intrusive than a lot of other stuff but yeah i like it so what did he think well he didn't have much to say about the ppq compact to him the trigger is just too glock like staple gunny to me i think it's a nice trigger for what it is but he's also coming from a 1911 perspective he also thought the slide release control was a little large personal taste so i don't see a problem with that now one thing he did say that i agree with he would have preferred the more german style paddle release versus the button because again, the paddle release is really the best of both worlds. You do get a large control, but it's also very integrated with the trigger guard, not an issue. But Walter well, changed that to appeal more to the American market who like buttons, ironically because of the 1911, that's more of a training thing. Now, one thing he did compliment were the sights. And again, these are standard Walther sights. These are the metal ones. In fact, they're the ones that if you shine a flashlight on them, can glow in the dark for 15 to 30 minutes. So he liked that. Obviously it was reliable, didn't have any problems, but he didn't seem all that taken with it. However, the PPS M2, he seemed to enjoy more. Now, even though this doesn't have as nice of a trigger, not bad I think you like that the slide release even though it's shorter is a little bit more pronounced and the mag release is a little smaller it did not seem to give issues 
And it too was reliable with all types of ammo. Not always a small, uh, easy feat when it comes to carry guns. So he seemed to prefer of the two, the PPS. But I don't think he'll be buying one. Could be wrong on that. As I said at the beginning, a carry gun is very much a personal fit, an ergonomics, a personal taste. For me, I like Walther's. I trust that they're well made. The grip styling that they've used ever since the P99. Well, the very first day someone put a P99 in my hand, it just fit right. And back in the late 90s, early 2000s, there just weren't as many polymer options. And this was a pretty revolutionary gun back then, or at least the predecessor. And they've kind of continued on. For me, that's it. I've owned one of these for 20 years, and I'm exceedingly comfortable with them. They're styling, and I trust them. But you get other guys who are more Glock-oriented, and you get guys like j -Row who are coming off 1911s, and he still was kind of wanting the 1911-style trigger. And even though he wants a gun that is um, you know, easier to carry, less likely to print than a 1911 one thing he has to do is make some other sacrifices now this it's about an inch and a half maybe 1.3 inches thick this here is actually under an inch thick except for the protruding controls which pushes it to about 1.1 and he did comment on how he liked how thin this is and it is shaped in such a way that it yeah, this doesn't have much sticking out. It is meant for carry and not the snag. It too has those steel sights that can be illuminated with a flashlight. So that's kind of neat. Again, they use the same sights. But for anyone who asks about a carry gun, like what would you do? I usually don't want to say because I'd rather them pick something up their alley. A lot of people like the M&P Shield. A lot of people like Glock's offerings. Again, everyone has one now. Breda has theirs. Uh, of course, CZ has several guns now. It's whatever you're comfortable with. However, it was an excuse to bring out a couple of Walthers. I'm not sure I've even fired this one since I loaned it to uh, Chris Bartacci. I had to think about it for a minute. But no, they're fun, reliable, uh, not snappy i'm very comfortable good german quality in my opinion so your mileage may vary and there of course are different versions this is considered the le version because it has the three mags and illuminated sights there are different styles and of course like i said i know there are newer walther variants like the pdp as well but we went to the range had some footage so i figured hey why not share some video stuff Hope everyone's having a good holiday season. Please feel free to comment. And if you could, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha. Catch you very soon next time.